Well, hello, you're watching me. Have a look at the Star Trek official Starship collection made by Eva Gormos. <clears throat> Bit of a cough there. We're looking at number 85 today, which is the Federation Hollow Ship, as seen in Insurrection. And this is an interesting one. Defences, cloaking device. I was on the impression Defiant was the only ship allowed to have a cloaking device. So what, shall we just bend the rules, our own requirements? Oh, jellyfish. I got the jellyfish. It's coming up at some point soon. Um, defences, cloaking device, and that's your lot. I don't do much else, does it? It's just a floating brick, to be honest. Uh, we've got some pretty pictures. Some more pretty pictures, obviously, from the film Insurrection. Some more pretty pictures. Data chatting to the fishes. Here we go, look. Federation Hollis ship was fitted with a cloaking device, even though this is in violation of the treaty. Pat between Fuller and Roger, it's really, really So basically, they were being naughty. But to be fair, they're transporting a species from one homeworld to another without knowing that. It's kind of naughty as well, isn't it? Uh, let's have a look. What else we got? Uh, some typical Federation designs into the hollow ship. They look okay. It wouldn't surprise me if you actually see that design as a normal on-screen ship. Mm, that looks familiar. I'm sure I've seen that design somewhere before. Um, there we are, the more traditional brick shapes. Um, screenplay. It's pretty pictures. Creepy people. And there's Wolf. He always finds his way into the film study for some reason. And there you go. Obviously, it was from Insurrection the film. So what we've got coming up next, we have a Gorn Starship. Interesting one. That's probably from the original series. Um, as I said previously, I'm not too clued up with the original series because I haven't watched them all. I just pick and choose what episodes I watch for the original series. So we look at the brick. It feels really light. Oh, that is really, really light. So there feels like there is nothing to this at all. That is, that is one hundred and ten percent plastic. Yeah, why don't we just break it, shall we? Uh, which way around is it going? According to the picture, that is the front. Now, I would have thought these red bits would indicate impulse engines, but obviously not. Um, cool. This is actually really bad. Right. So look, we've got a nice big hole at the front, which indicates absolutely nothing whatsoever. There's no decoration at all in there. You've got some silly painted red bits at the front, which I thought should have been on the back, but never mind. You've got your blue streak along the side, which I guess indicates your warp engine. You've got these huge gaps all the way around. All the way around, which indicate when you just stick the bloody thing together. Around the back here, I'm guessing this is the impulse engine. Look how badly painted that one is. This left one is really bad. The right one's slightly better. You can hear it creaking away. This is poor. Poor, poor, poor. They could have done so much with this. Bit more solid, bit more detail, bit more decorate. It's, the plastic mould isn't that bad, to be honest. It's very humpy bumpy very... It's got potential to be detailed. They just haven't. They haven't done anything at all with it, which is a shame. They should have done, but to be fair, on the screen, there isn't much to it, which doesn't help things. Like I said, it's just a flying brick, but that is really thin. That is really, it's actually creaking. It's actually falling apart in my hand. I can feel it splitting apart as I'm touching it. That is rubbish. This is stupid. Oh, hang on. This I think this cardboard box is actually heavier than this model. That's bad. But there you go. That is your hollow ship. If you're going to buy a model, don't buy the hollow ship. All right, so thank you for watching, and I will catch you on my next one. Bye-bye.